Now we've all seen objects move before, but when we first start animating, a lot of times we're still struggling to understand the program and to get used to the shortcut keys and all of those things. So occasionally what I like to do is just try to forget about the entire software package and just watch the animation as if I were sitting in an audience watching this at a theater. So you've seen things move before and you are a good judge of how things should move. Just by asking yourself, does that look right or not, is usually one of the first passes of your critique. So let's watch this and see if there are things that look incorrect about this animation. Now, the first thing I notice is that there's no roll on this animation. The ball is moving forward, but as it impacts the ground, we're not seeing the results of the friction from the ground that would cause the ball to roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some roll animation to this now. I'm going to do that in the same way that I added the translate X motion. If I go to my rx, ry, rz values, I can adjust those values to see which of these results in the role that we want. And as you'll see, it's rz. So the rz channel needs to change over time in order to make this ball look like it's rolling. Again, it will probably be a constant roll. So all of these extra keyframes, although I could adjust all of them just to make my life easier, I'm going to delete them and just adjust the start and stop keyframes. I'll set this to auto tangent and let's see which direction I need to adjust this in order to get my roll. If I move this keyframe downward, you're going to see I'm not getting very much change. Now, the reason for this is because it takes 360 degrees of rotation in order to get this ball to roll all the way around once. And currently our graph is only viewing from zero to like negative one. So that's less than one degree of rotation. One of the ways we can sort of change this is we could zoom way out and start to pull this down. And you're gonna see we're getting more of that motion. But another way we could do it is just to type a number into this section. So if I wanted the ball to rotate all the way around once, I could do negative 360. And then when I frame this up, you'll see that the rotation happens all the way around throughout this sequence of keyframes. Now, is 360 degrees enough? Again, let's just play it and see how it looks to us. To me, I'm going to say no. I think it needs to be a little bit more. So I will, again, RZ, grab this and just move it down a little bit more. So maybe 600 degrees. The other thing is that roll will start to slow down a little bit. So maybe I will set this keyframe to linear. Let's see if that feels better. So it feels better, but I think that the roll starts to slow down just a little too much at the end. So again, I can hold shift and middle click and sort of drag this tangent in a little bit so it eases in a little less. And so now when I hit play, that's feeling better. Now earlier, we learned about the 12 principles of animation and one of those 12 principles was squash and stretch. So let's go ahead and add some squash and stretch to this ball as well. When we talk about squash and stretch, we're talking about the results of the force that is happening in this motion. So for example, our ball on this impact right here, we would expect to see a little bit of squash on this. The reason we would expect to see that squash is because the ball 
was traveling down and it impacted the ground and had to change directions. The energy has to be absorbed into the ball and then redirected back out. So we would expect to see on frame 24, the ball squashed a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of squash in my channel box. So if I adjust that up and down, again how I did this is I clicked the word squash and stretch and then I can middle click in my viewport to add the right amount of squash. It seems like about 0.3. If the numbers are changing by too large of increments, you can also hold down control while you do this and it will happen in a smaller increment. So let's say negative 0.33 seems like about the right amount to me. So I've added that keyframe on frame 24. And so watch what happens to our ball now as we go from frame 12 to frame 24. Our ball's starting to squash even before it gets to the ground. And then as it leaves, the ball's still squashed. Now, the reason for the squash was because the ball impacted the ground and all of that energy that was traveling downward had to be redirected back upward. This animation is not currently telling that story. If you look at this, the ball starts to squash way before it hits the ground, which doesn't make sense. So what we really need is we need the ball to seem either stretched or at least normal shape, the frame right before it hits the ground. So if I were to go back to my squash and stretch on frame 23, and just type in zero there. Now what I get is my ball traveling downward unaware and then suddenly hitting the ground and being squashed and then as it comes back up it's still squashed we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute now we could exaggerate this a little bit if we wanted to by adding just a little bit of stretch right before the ball hits the ground so again I'll hold control and start to stretch my ball just a little bit and so now the ball stretches out and it feels almost more like it's stretching because it's traveling downward and then when it hits the ground and squashes, it also amplifies the effect of that squash. Now we have to be careful not to go too big, but I may add just a little bit more stretch on there to help. So we get a little bit of stretch and then the squash. Now the last thing I'll do just to make this a little more realistic is that since the ball is traveling in an arc, if I go to visualize, create editable motion trail, you'll see that the ball is traveling in this arc. I would like the stretch to happen in the same direction as the arc. So again, on frame 23, I will adjust my rotate Z just a little bit to point it along the path of this arc. And so now as my ball travels in, it stretches in the direction it's traveling and then squashes when it hits the ground. Now, the frame immediately after that, the ball's still squashed, and that seems more like silly putty or something. I threw it against the ground, it squashed, but it didn't stretch back out. Right? So to make this look correct on frame 25, I'm going to add just a little bit of stretch, and a little bit of rotation. And so now that squash and stretch looks like that. Now each impact is going to be a little less force because the bounces are not as high. So I'll make my squash a little less on each of these other impacts. Again, I want to have a stretch frame right before the impact. And I'm gonna angle that along the path. And the same for right after the impact. I'm 
and again just repeat this on each of these impacts. Now, if I select my motion curve and delete it, and we watch this animation, it's going to feel a little bit more realistic. Sometimes the controller is a little distracting, so I'll go to show and uncheck NURBS curves so we can watch it without the controller. And you'll see that motion is looking a little bit better.